Our two readings today have the story of two calls. The call of Stephen, who could have saved his life by saying no, and the call, the invitation of Jesus to the crowd to eat the bread of life. And by saying yes, they achieve life in this world and in the next. So let us meditate on the call of Stephen. Some time ago, I received an email from a friend said, if a traffic cop ever pulls you up, there are 10 things you should not say. The first is, why did you stop me? Shouldn't you be at the Dunkin' Donuts? Number two, please hold my beer as I reach out for my driver's license and car registration. Need not go through all of them, but somebody should have written 10 things that Stephen should not have said as he stood before his judges, the Sadducees and the high priests, and he was on trial for his very life. The first thing they would have told him, do not call your judges a stiff-necked people. Secondly, do not call them uncircumcised in heart and in hearing. And thirdly, do not call them betrayers and murderers, because after all, your life is in danger. But Stephen already knew that the minds of his judges, of the Sadducees and the high priests, had already been made up. They had already condemned him to death, and few of them probably had a couple of stones in their satchel just in case. And so Stephen, knowing that his time had come up, he realized that he was under persecution by those in authority, under pressure by the high priest and the Sadducees, and definitely under the uh, condemnation of death, decided to speak the truth. Speak the truth for the record, as we have it, Speak the truth for the people who are listening in the court. Speak the truth for the people who would listen to him soon out after they came out of the court. And for us, a thousand, two thousand years later, that we too might meditate. St. Luke, in his Acts of the Apostles, from which this story is given, likes to tell us that the Acts of the Apostles were really a gospel of the Holy Spirit. During this month of May, a lot of our eighth grade students will be confirmed as Pentecost approaches. And they know that the gifts of the Spirit are wisdom and understanding and knowledge. <coughs> but it seems that Stephen was not going to use these gifts, but rather courage and the fear of God, which made him speak out in a manner which in our civil society today would say, would say was totally foolish and foolhardy. But St. Luke wanted to show us that the life of Stephen and the death of Stephen was following on the pattern of his Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. And if you listen carefully to Cynthia, she read that first reading, there are four or five points that we can see in Stephen's death and in Stephen's trial that was so close to what Jesus himself went through. In the first place, when the witnesses were brought against Stephen, their stories did not match. They could not even get their act together. In the second place, as they were speaking and they condemned Stephen to death, they would take him out of the city and kill him. The third point that uh, St. Luke brings up is what David sang for us in the responsorial psalm. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. And that's what Jesus said on the cross to his Father. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And the fourth and final touch that uh, St. Luke gives us is, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And so you and I have been called to witness, and sometimes we face persecution for the fact that we witness to the love and care and generosity of Jesus Christ. Jesus who now invites, invites the crowd to eat of the bread of life. 
Like Stephen, they could have said no and saved their lives. Or Stephen could have saved his lives and they could have said, ah, I, we don't need any of this. But they decided to ask Jesus for the bread. And they said, Lord, give us this bread always. And hopefully all of us here at St. Basil's and celebrating this Mass by television would also ask for that same gift. Lord, give us this bread always. Unfortunately, the crowd did not understand the awesomeness of the gift and the greatness of the gift. They had just been fed on five barley loaves and two fish, and that was fresh in their minds, and that is what they thought they would get every day. And so they would say, Lord, give us this gift always. <coughs> Hopefully, you and I have had teachers who have taught us about the awesomeness of the Eucharist. Hopefully, you and I have been able to pray, to meditate, and to grasp this awesome gift, the gift that will give us not only life in this world, give us strength and courage, but give us life forevermore. Hopefully, you and I can fall down in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament and realize this precious gift a gift that Jesus gives us and with which he will remain with us through all times. Like Thomas, we could say, my Lord and my God. Like Bartimaeus, the blind man, they could say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Like Peter, we could ask for mercy and pardon and say, Lord, I am a sinful man. Like the centurion at the foot of the cross, we could be in praise and awe before God and say, truly, this is the Son of God. Jesus is waiting for your call. He sends out the invitation, he sends out the call, and he waits for your answer. God bless you all. Let us now pray together. We pray for men and women who continue to witness like Stephen and who die, especially in places where Christianity is persecuted, in Pakistan, in Northern India, in some of the countries of the Middle East, where to be a Christian means to sign your death warrant. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our church, like Stephen, to speak the truth and to speak with transparency we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for our civil leaders as we have chosen them to take care of the most vulnerable and the weak in our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those of you who have written in asking for prayers, for those who have died during the night, for those suffering from cancer and Alzheimer's, for those suffering from ALS and Parkinson's, and for those who care for them and grieve in their care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for an increase of vocations to priestly and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord Loving and gracious God, in, your, in faith and love and in trust, trusting in Jesus Christ, we bring all these prayers knowing that you will answer them in your own time and in your own pleasure. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 